Hey, product launchers, welcome back. I have Nadia Flory here, and she's amazing. And she has created a skincare brand. And the reason I invited her on here, because I know a lot of you have those beauty aspirations out there. You have aspirations to make amazing brands. Now, your brand, Nadia, is called Dermasons. Did I say that Actually, right? The, that is the product name. The brand is Avesance. Avesance. That's right. I, how, how do I know? I was trying to do the voice of your commercial. Avesance. And it's Dermasance. And I love it because it has, I mean, it has that beautiful, that beautiful foreign sound. And don't we want all of our products to have like amazing foreign ingredients that make us all look beautiful and <laughs> wonderful. But here's the thing. Building a beauty brand is hard, right? Challenging, I would say. Challenging, yes. <laughs> yeah. But you have a background in it. And we get a lot of people who are just like, I love beauty products. I'd love to create my own line. They're beauty influencers or they're, you know, out there and they've never done it before. So I want to start with where you started because you already had uh, experience in this marketplace. Okay, where I started. Um, first, I started with my own need. So I was looking for something to solve my problem. And so I remember one day I went to uh, Nordstrom and she said, what, what are you looking for? And I said, well, I'm looking for something that will help with my oily skin, but would not dry my skin at the same time. And it's funny because she said, well, for this, there's Clinique. And not that I have anything against Clinique, but I, I looked at one of the products she's showing me and I said, there's alcohol in there as the third ingredient. And, I, and she said, like she looked at me blank, like like I was talking to, like what kind of language was I talking? <laughs> well, how and, did you even know that? That's like the thing, right? Well, that's because that that's well, I'm a I'm a chemist, so that's why I could tell that that well. Okay, I see where you're going with this. So, uh, so let's go really back even farther because I want to go back to what your experience is because you drew on that as you were, as you were, you found this problem, which I find is like exactly the way it happens for so many of us, right? We have a problem and we want to solve it. But right. you had a, a focus and experience viewpoint that it started from before that. So let's go back a little farther. Well, okay. So further before, before all that, I started uh, after, um, High school, I went into, um, I studied in college as a textile, well, as a textile dyeing chemist. So I have the chemistry background, but I would put color on textile. That's what I did then. And I worked for a Bayer in Canada. So I'm originally from Montreal. And so, however, there is a, there's a little parallel I want to share here is that there's a reason why I'm working in the lab. And that's because I'm, Back in, as a teenager, I started with a lot of acne and I did not feel that I was um, good for media. So I actually chose the lab route as it's supposed to be like, let's say in marketing, because I did not think that I, like I would shy away from the public. You were so hiding out very, in the lab, literally. <laughs> I literally hide in a lab. And so the, and, and of course, you don't know these things till you start diving in and find out why is it that I'm not successful. But that came like 15 years later. <laughs> but so I just progressed forward, you know, like school, it, like you're told, go find a job, um, get good grades. No, go to school, get good grades, find a job, and then be, try to be happy for the rest of your life. And so this is what I was following. And until I was still struggling with my oily skin. And the problem in my 30s is it shifted. It was no longer like acne, but it would be some breakouts and it would be and like especially annoying. Like I would put makeup in the morning and by the time I, I, I arrive at work, it's gone. And I, I've been there. <laughs> I, I, I don't know if I can say this, but that's how I felt. I felt like... <laughs> I felt like I was a melted candle. I've been there. I have been there, Nadia. You are talking to a lot of women who feel that way. It's like your makeup just slid off your face. Yeah. Yeah. And so, or, or the worst is you hugged, the, or you left it on the first one you hugged. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, done that too. <laughs> so that was my, that was, so it was annoying. And people were meaning very well, but they were giving me all sorts of advice that was kind of like um, out of, 
like when people don't know, they just tell you all sorts of advice. And so that's when I kind of start questioning the benzoyl peroxide and that they would put in the alcohol, the drying agent, because it's one thing to try to get rid of the blemish, but it's something else uh, having a red patch with that flakes all around the skin. And so I learned later on that oily skin is actually a form of skin sensitivity, but people don't see it that way. They think that, oh, it's oily skin. We're going to strip the heck out of it by putting a lot of alcohol in it. Yeah. So that brings me back to what I was saying to this lady at Nordstrom when she looked at me funny when I said, well, there's alcohol in there. By the way, alcohol is not necessarily a bad thing. It's just that it can be an irritant when your skin is already irritated. Right. And if it's the third ingredient, that means it's pretty predominant in the product. Correct. Like you probably have maybe two, three, five percent, depending on the reason as to why it's there. Sometimes it's just a vehicle in the sense that it will just be there, it evaporates quickly, and then it makes you feel like, uh, because when you have oily skin, you don't want to butter. You want something that that just goes in and... So sometimes the alcohol has a reason to be there. And I'm talking about SD alcohol. I'm not talking about citeryl alcohol, which is something else, which is your emulsifier. So I, so there's different kind of alcohol and let's not assume that one thing is everything. I'm so so I have to ask this now because, you know, so did you know all of that before you started the project of trying to create something or did you know this um, or did you learn this during the process of creating it? During the process. So there's because a lot I, to learn, right? <laughs> yes, I le- I left the I left this the the the, the whole skin um, uh, textile environment. Like I left at the time, um, just to kind of go back a little bit. When I was working in a lab, and then eventually I finished up a, a, because I had the background in textile. I finished up as a textile engineer here in America, and then in that. In that time, I was working already on the skincare because that's when I like, oh, I know something that this lady at Nordstrom did not know. However, I quit my job called Turkey, deciding, oh, I'm going to start the skincare. And that's 2012. And I'm just like, I arrived one day and I told my husband, hey, by the way, I quit my job. (laughs) Wow, how brave and scary at the same time. Yes. And so everything else I told you about the SD alcohol and all the irritant and all that came afterwards. So I did not know any of that. All I did is I wanted the skincare and I incorporated that company in 2008. And we were not making, like at the time I thought, okay, a skincare is a logo. And so it's I said, a brand, I right. It's just a brand. It's it, the brand. And then I thought, okay, if it's a, if it's the brand, Then we need a logo, we need a tagline, we need the packaging. And I was already doing manufacturing before I even knew what was my messaging, which is the wrong way around, by the way. (laughs) However, I would not know the messaging till now. So if I had waited till I had the messaging to create the logo and all that, I would not be any further forward. So because you didn't have an audience, right? At that time. So you didn't know who you were selling to besides yourself, right? So you didn't know how to make a tagline that would resonate with them. How how to do that right? Well, actually things would come out like my my biggest inspiration moment is in the bathroom, by the way. I get I dry my hair and I, I have to stop halfway through to go and write something. That's where my tagline at the time, which I'm not really using it now, but fit the profile it's where elegance matters and that was my struggle to look elegant wherever i come out i I show up but wherever i go to the the feeling of knowing that i don't have to go back to the bathroom within five minutes of arriving was really important and so feeling elegant was really important and so these things mattered and however the deeper well there's two sides to it. There's the product and the product benefits side to it. And then there's the empowerment and how actually it can brace, like, like 
if you had told me five years ago, hey, Nadia, let's do a podcast together, I would be hiding. <laughs> <laughs> you would have been hiding, especially when I told you it was a video cast, right? <laughs> I, I, I would not even talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm so glad you've come this far because I'm enjoying it. So let's step and let's talk about the path of developing a beauty product because that's what I think a lot of people, they get this idea, like they're in, their, in Nordstrom's like you were, and they have this flash that like, this is what the beauty market needs. And then, and then it's like, how do you go about figuring this out? How do you go about developing that? So what does that path look like? Do you want to know the path I took or the path that I should have taken? <laughs> Let's do the path you took and then tell us the path you should have taken. Let's do it that way. The path that I took was I had a need. So, and, um, and it, it, okay, so because I was already from a manufacturing pers place, so I understood ingredient and I had access to ingredient um, suppliers. And they gave me access to a huge database that all the supplier gets into because that's where they promote their product to people like me. And, and they had like their recipe already there. They had their formula already there because, you know, by the way, you don't learn to formulate in school. You learn, it's, it's like mentoring. You learn to formulate with mentors. And like if you would go to work for, let's say L'Oreal or Procter and Gamble, and it's the senior that teaches the younger people. However, I had access to this library. So this imagine for a moment that Martha Stewart has access to 20,000 recipe. And then she can kind of just look at it and make it her own. Now, I did not know why I needed 0.25% of this particular ingredient. But when you see it in, in 20 recipe, you say, okay, that, that's how much I'm going to use on mine. So right, that, you start to compare. Ah, ah, smart. Yes. So it's a bit like in cooking. If you see half a, a, tea, a teaspoon of vanilla in all your vanilla cake, then you say, well, why I'm not going to put two cups of vanilla. I'm going to put just one teaspoon because that's what the norm is doing. You may not know why until you try it and then you realize it doesn't taste good. But, <laughs> so, so the first thing was understanding how you build a formulation, what, what it takes. And there's a very, Did you try the method of like creating some of those formulas or trying them first and saying like, Oh, I don't like the quality of this. Oh no, I tried. I, I spent three years just in the lab trying. I, ah, so I, you I, may, have thrown, then... I, I may have thrown in the, in the trash, maybe, I don't know, 20,000 trials before. Wow. I, 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 and, and I was developing as I went along uh, because at first I was like trying to put everything into it. And, uh, and actually, and this is really important for the audience who wants to do natural because I was heading to try to do natural, like the, the real natural product. Mm -hmm. And it looked like mud and it smelled terrible. And I'm like, I am not and sure. And it has a I shorter self, shelf life too, huh? That. And I, I thought for a moment, do I really want to, like, will people really buy this? Because in the end, when people really go to the store and buy a cream, the first two things they will do is look at the texture and then the next thing they will smell it. Mm. I mean, the, the, I mean, manure is the most natural thing that exists, but if I would put manure in a bottle and say it's absolutely <laughs> natural and organic, do you want it? No, no, I don't think so. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So the, the point is I'm making is that if you aiming at just natural, just because everybody's saying it, um, as a formulator, I need to share one thing that no matter what you put in a jar, it is a chemical. Even water is a chemical and it's a misunderstanding. It's actually a marketing term to use, to use the word natural. And that is the misconception. So it, I, if you want to go, if people in your audience wants to go in the natural route, what I would suggest is expand upon because there is so many people who wants to do the same. So what is your next differentiator after being natural? 
Well, and also, I think I remember talking with you once and you shared something with me, which I thought was just fascinating was that if you don't, if you, if it is truly all natural, you also have a higher risk of growing, of breeding bacteria. So if it's something where you stick your finger in it and you don't have things to help prevent bacteria growth and other well, things. Well, that is, that is where the, where that comes in is the preservative. And the thing is that people in the natural world tend to shy away from preservative as thinking that they are bad. The thing is they take the concept of food, like we want to eat a fresh apple. We want to eat something fresh that is come from the garden and we don't want preservative on our food we eat. We assume, we take the same logic and we put in skincare, except that we expect a bottle that will last six weeks in your bathroom. At, or longer <laughs> sometimes. Some, yeah, longer sometimes. And sometimes you may have it in a car. Sometimes you may fly it in a plane with it. So uh, you, you don't do that for six weeks with an apple. Your apple will not look that great after six weeks. The thing is we assume the same process with one and another because we don't understand the chemistry further. Right. The, so the preservative is a tricky situation people you see the thing is um the natural skincare industry has done a big push to sell their product with fear behind it mm. they created fear so in creating fear they especially creating fear of chemical you don't think of anything is wrong with something until someone says but there is no silicone or there's no sodium so, sodium laurel sulfate. And then you start thinking, well, what's wrong with silicone and sodium laurel sulfate? Well, then they don't go further with that. They just tell you they don't have it. So my point I'm making is with the preservative, no matter uh, if you have any water-based product, you will need a preservative because if you don't have it in there within weeks, like, and, and just remember also that from manufacturing to having it in a box, to having it in a store, to having it in your hands, that's not just six weeks. Right. Your product needs to meet chef, shelf life for over two years. And that's why the preservative is so important in there. Yeah, see, this is, uh, this is why I wanted you all to hear from Nadia, because this is a wealth of knowledge of like learning on the job, learning on the spot about these things, and, and, and sometimes breaking down our preconceived notions. And I find it happens too often with our creators and our inventors out there, where they hold the hard and fast line, I'm not having any preservatives, I'm not having any of this. And in the end, you create an unmarketable product, because as you said, it's not even going to make it to the shelf before the thing's expired. So you, you really can't have a viable product at the end of the day. So you have to start thinking about these things. It's like, look, I want to create a, I want to, I have a mission. And my most important mission is this benefit that you wanted to create, which you wanted to create elegant oil-free skin, right? You know, <laughs> or, and, and makeup that doesn't slip off and, and, you know, whatever that might be, that's your goal. And in trying to make that goal, having an open mind about what it's going to take to make that happen, because that's the problem you're solving, not I'm going to make a brand that is totally natural. Like that's not a, at the end of the day, serving into the benefit and the mission that you have that is really going to get you your fans and going to get your brand to have a perception that it's doing what you want it to do. Correct. And, and also as a manufacturer, I had a certain amount of consciousness in the sense that so many people will just put something in a bottle just to sell it. However, I, and I often, um, I, I don't want to just keep talking about the natural skin care because it's not just them, but how often did you get something as a gift? You did not like it. And in the first try, you did not like it. You throw it away in the garbage. Now I, feel as a manufacturer that I have a responsibility that what I'm putting in gets used. Yeah. So you have to have a purpose beyond just making money and yes. filling the land field was not one of them. I mean, sometimes we want to be green. We want to be, um, we want to have a conscious to, to the environment. We are afraid of plastic and all these things. But the thing is when we create something just for the sake of disposable and and throwing it away. Like that is why one of the things I created in my product is I've made it multi-purpose. 
Uh, so it's doing more than one thing. Yeah, it, it can help you with little breakouts, but it can also detox your skin at night. It can also mattify your skin. It does many things. Why? Because I, well, I was formulating it from a consumer's perspective, and I put so many antioxidants because that's what protects the skin, antioxidants. So I want to create... Then prevention. you have less products that you have to use, which means less in the landfill. So you are helping the environment at the end of the day, right? <laughs> exactly. That exactly. So oftentimes, I, and of course, I, I did not plan from a consumer, uh, from a manufacturer, like it was the girl in the lab really formulating <laughs> this. Like I want to put one, I, I don't have the time to do five things in the morning. And, and I realized that that's why you create a day moisturizer and a night moisturizer and an eye serum that's because you can put one or two main ingredient in one of each and then you sold three bottles yeah and and and, and you know <laughs> there's a market for that too it's great too some because you know there's thousands of wonderful ingredients you cannot put them all in one product and i'm just going to say this this is important for the people who wants to start out there why you cannot put all the same ingredient in the all the good one is because you have to watch your ph some ingredient will work at a between a certain ph range but you can't so depending on what you got like like let's say like the aha uh, product which are ph very ph acid i don't know if i'm getting too technical here it's a little technical i'm not totally but like why is ph bad and that's what's going on in my head no, right no. now so it's maybe for other people as well no, it's not pH is bad, is you have to know um, you have to know that certain ingredient itself will work optimum at a certain pH. Ah. So let's say for example So it's an effectiveness. Yes. Yeah. So that, that means that you wanna just categorize the good ingredient that will work at this pH and not use the one at the other. So it's not about so you can make one some good, ingredients ineffective because they don't work at that right pH level. So you make the main ingredient at the level that you need it to. And then if those other ingredients don't work at that level, they maybe don't need to be in that product. They need to be in their own. Yes. And that's why sometimes, uh, uh, let's say, a nice serum will be created versus a moisturizer because they will have different... Um, also, <laughs> I, I can go on. I mean, the viscosity matters, the, the texture matters. How easy is it to put it around my eyes? I know. Yeah. Cause, cause you know, pat and don't rub. <laughs> so like, if is it smooth? <laughs> yes. So all these things will have an impact and that's how you get to decide on which ingredient and that, and, and again, something else for people who wants to manufacture their skincare is to understand that there's a minimum quantity you need to buy. So when you think you can produce 25 bottles, when they want to sell you 25 kilo, uh, you have a problem. Your biggest, <laughs> your smallest batch for them is like, a, excuse the expression, but for them it's kind of like a joke. The manufacturing company for them is like, it's nothing for them. It's 5,000 unit. Well, yeah. count 5,000 unit. And if it costs you $10 to produce a 5,000, that's $50,000 right there of your investment before you even know if anyone can buy it or will buy it or not. Wow. That is no, it's a lot of money before you even know if somebody wants to buy it. And that is my number one rule here on product launch hazards that you do not make something, you do not spend the money until you are sure somehow that someone will plunk down some dollars for it. So you want to know you can, you either have access to the market, you have conversion, they're interested in what you have to sell. So you've got to do it a totally different way because you can't physically do it with product. Because you can't test it if you can't make it. Well, the option for them, though, is to, you, you can do different things. You can do a um, private label where they already have a formula and you, they just put your name on the bottle. That, so there's other ways around it. It's, so at least you could be selling them something and gaining an audience to talk to and saying, hey, is this improving your skin? And if it is, you know, would you be interested in something that would do more? And here's what it is. So now you have somebody to have a conversation with because they did buy from you. So that's actually a great way, Nadia. I love that. But I want to go back. So we were talking about like all the wrong ways. So you, so here you created a website, a brand, a message, bought packaging, and you spent 20,000 versions of formulations trying to come up with the right one. And so what else did you do? And what else did you do in those early days um, of, of trying to build this brand? 
well, I did it the whole, the, the, the wrong way. You know, I did, <laughs> I, I did everything. So what would have been the right way now that you know? <laughs> well, what you just said is the right way. Wait till you have the audience before you get to do the production. So the thing is, um, I, I'm going to, this is really important. And this is, uh, it kind of walk away a little bit from production. The, the thing is that, although that's a big factor and it's really important, the reason why I created the inventory so quickly when I felt that my marketing was not there and I didn't have the, the, the real platform to sustain me is because I had quit my job overnight and my husband was not really happy with me staying at home and there was a lot of pressure on me to succeed. And so you wanted to feel legitimately into business and having, and, and having inventory was the push. Well, if, without inventory, you can't sell. So if, and I felt um, that I rushed things to satisfy the, 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 the household and it backfired on all of us because only when money is not at home that you realize that money is actually a buffer in your relationship. When the money is there, you don't ask questions, you live, everybody's doing their own thing almost like on autopilot. But when the money is not there, you start realizing who you're living with. And, uh, and on top of that, a lot of, um, it puts a lot of family stress. I hear this again and again, Nadia, you are very, very right in this. And this is one of the things I want you guys to listen to out there, especially you inventors in the world and you get really caught up in your thing and you, you, you start to spend money and you start to build inventory and you start to believe that people are going to come. And I want you to have lots of passion and belief in, in what you're making because you should. But you also really need to be cautious about the money side of things because it puts tremendous stress on your family. And I have seen, seen many, many inventors lose their families over, over inventory that's sitting in a garage because they shouldn't have bought it too soon. And it put tremendous stress. I've seen bankruptcies and all kinds of things happen. And I hate to see that because it, it is, it's, it's stressful. And it makes it very hard for you to focus on building that business that you need, so, you need to focus on. Yes. All that said, though, without the inventory, I would not be where I am today. Yeah. See, and, and this is why it's such a different business that you're in. Yeah. The, the inventory is, was only there for me to push myself out of my comfort zone, get out of hiding, and being able to um, shine probably the, it, it, it was meant, it was the, the rite of passage or the, the friction it takes from, uh, from when a cocoon gets into a butterfly and and so it needed that but if i did not have the the inventory in my hand me asking questions i would have probably today be at home with with you still wouldn't have the brand going right i would know and i would probably be at home watching netflix being miserable in that relationship well, I'm glad you're not, and you're out here moving on it. So, so now, so so now you're focusing on a lot of marketing. I have seen you do some things. I've seen you do some videos, and and, and they're really fun. Is that out video out yet? Yes. Okay, yes. good. We'll link to it, you guys. You got to see it. It's funny. It's it's amusing, and you'll get Nadia's humor because she's definitely got a sense of humor. And so I'll link to that video just so you can see what she's done here. And it, it has this um, I'm going to call it a Dollar Shave Club kind of inspiration, but more on the side of us women who will like get it and laugh. So the, it's funny you've mentioned this because I told you that what I was doing earlier in, in October, and you kind of like. Mm, I was I'm like, it doesn't sure. make sense. Yeah. But then I saw it and I was like, aha, uh -huh, now I get it. And it's very you. And it just, ha yeah, it has a, you know, good sense of humor on it. Just to, just to say if, uh, this is a, actually a very good uh, thing to talk about this video. I had the idea in 2015 and I could not put it together. And it's interesting because in 2015, I had more money in my, in my hands than I have now. And the thing is that I created that video it's like you know sometimes we use money as an excuse for not doing certain things so I, w I had more money back then than now however I had more guts now like I <laughs> self-investment what paid off because when I created this video it was um, I was ready but I practice uh, all the month of May from May to July I practice uh, in front of my camera I mean it takes guts to um, I don't want to 
well, it takes guts to just do a video. I, to put I mean, put yourself I, out there. It does. Yes. It does. And, and especially and, when you're doing something that that's meant to be funny, which is harder because, you know, it's like the humor, is it too personal? Is I get it, but is everybody going to get it? That's why I was nervous about it. And, but once I, and, but I also trust your videographer, I have to tell you, because he <laughs> might be my son-in-law. And so, <laughs> so I do trust him and I know he, I know he would never let a client go wrong. Like he would, he would say something to you. And that's, uh, that's a gift when they will talk, when they will tell, talk you out of something that you would might fall into a trap in. Well, I knew I was going somewhere with this when I talk about that, that concept in May and he, he laugh. And I thought, oh, if he laugh, that means that this is, this is a guy who is laughing. So, um, because I have to be mindful that my audience is a younger audience. Will they think it's a, a good joke, right? The, the thing, it, it's a parallel for, for anyone who wants to do anything in this, in, in, like stepping out and getting your zone of genius. There is no other way than, than putting yourself out there. If you want to, like, I hear so many people who say, well, we'll start something and we're going to put a, a celebrity in front of the product. That's one way to do that. It, it's more expensive to do it that way. But when you want to create a, your own brand from, the, from scratch, um, you've got to be able to show up and show a, a, there, there's no way, uh, other way around it. I don't you know have how to be to the celebrity. You have to be the influencer because it's your product. It's your brand. It's your passion. And you're the best one to talk about it. Founders have to act like founders, right? I mean, this is the core of it. And you can't hide in the lab. <laughs> no. no, you can't. Another, so, yeah. another thing I want to just mention that is really important is uh, don't get stuck into the product benefit. Uh, L'Oreal has a lot of money and, and all these other big brands has a lot of money to 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 share the product benefit you need to stand above just to talk about uh anti-aging and wrinkle remover and all this you've got to stand what is your bigger why in this world that has a big impact on carrying your brand because you cannot compete on price you cannot compete on just product benefit so what is your next step what where do you differentiate yourself Right. And, you know, that is so important. I really think that is, um, you know, it's, we get a little caught up in like the trendy things that are going on in the beauty industry and, and they all have deeper pockets. And, yes. and so you really do have to stand out in, in not just your benefits and your why and, but also in how you, how you talk to your customers, because it's impersonal to buy from L'Oreal. It's personal to buy from Clinique, right? I mean, maybe you have a relationship with your Nordstrom person, but that's about it, right? You don't have a direct relationship. But if I can have a relationship with you and you're talking to me, wow, that's a big deal. The, yeah. the person who created it is talking to me. You know, that, that in and of itself is important. Yes. And yes, and very much it, that that's like, um, yes, it's everything. The, that, I mean, now I think we need more than any, any time ever before this kind of warm, fuzzy feeling, uh, nurturing that, um, because that our clients I, matter, that our, our users matter, that we care about them. Yes, definitely. I mean, I'm, the, I'm looking at it from, you see, for me, the skincare is like, I, I'm, I'm, I can cook, but not that of a great cooker, not enough to start a restaurant. But for me, the skincare is an extension of me. Only this year did I realize that I've just built me and put it in a bottle in the sense that like, I really put the, my 100%. Like when I selected the ingredient, I was really specific as to what I was doing, what I was aiming at. Um, understanding how the biology of the skin and so, and then I realized, like, I, I would, if I give of my heart, I would not, like, if you would come to my home and I would cook you a meal, I would not give you half cold plate, you know, just because I don't care that much. I would give you my whole love and, you know, you get the, the, the whole thing together, put, to, you know, in a nice set. It's the same thing with the skincare. You put everything in in it 
And I love that. I love that idea that you put love in it. And, that, and you know what? I think that that's the case of creation, right? That yes. those of us that whether it's you're creating a meal or you're creating a beauty product or you're creating anything that you're putting love into it, you're putting your passion, your interests, and you're sending that out. That has, a, that has to come back. So, I mean, that has to have a better resonance than those that are in it for the money, those that are in it to just, you know, market and hawk what comes next, what's trendy and let's tap into the trend. I really do believe in, in people who care get, having that come back to you tenfold. So I agree with you, Nadia. And I, I think that that's, that's why I invited you on the show because I knew that you would care just as much about the other people who want to be those creators as you would because you have that heart as you, as you do about your own products and your own brand and building all of that. So, so I want to talk about the biggest hazard. So we talk about that on the show. So what was the biggest thing that went wrong for you? What, what was the biggest mistake that you may have made in creating your beauty products and creating their brand? And what, what was that big risk that kind of blew up a little bit on you? Cause it happens. <laughs> well, uh, when I said that I ordered the inventory too soon, so of course I'm doing everything on a, uh, on a very tight budget. And the, so it's me and my ex-husband at the time, we're husband and wife, and we're working on this. And I'm actually uh, um, looking up to him because he's the true chemist, the, the, the one that really have experience in, in, but he's on a different industry. He's on the textile industry. And um, so a lot of it is I rely on him until I realize that I know more than he does. So thing number one is, don't never underestimate what you know uh, and think the other one knows more. It's not always the case. The thing is that I am, another thing that he was suggesting at the time was to do everything on my own, which takes forever. And uh, so we didn't have money to, because I quit my job. So I didn't have that, that extra income. So I did a lot of it on my own, meaning that I spent way too much time behind WordPress and, and a lot of things like that. Learning things um, that you only need to do once and, you know, and, and not, are not going to become a core part of your job in the future. I agree with you. That is not necessarily where you want to spend your time. Right. Except that the biggest mistake of all is not uh, looking into regulatory affair early on to watch my, what I was doing. So, uh, and it, when you create a cosmetic, you have, you have to be really careful about the language you're using you cannot use things like it treats or heal or all these words that are very popular words uh, or inflammation, but you can't use that when it's a cosmetic. And my whole website, two years of prep and, and copywriting and all that was ready at the same time as the inventory. And only because I had to print the box that I thought, okay, I better be safe. Then I got to this regulatory affair, and then she told me that 95% of what I've written uh, is uh, not right. Not mm, so. At least you got to it before you printed your box, though. So yes, you avoided but the biggest problem that I've seen. The yes, the thing is that it it floored me because I did not know then how to market this product. Because you couldn't brought, say all these things. <laughs> yes. So it took me all the way till 2018 before I could re-figure out how I'm going to market this. So it really floored me for three years. And and Because um, you'd been planning and working and, and, and putting it out there and all the messaging and the languaging was, yeah, oh, that's so hard, Nadia. Oh, my goodness. Well, I think it was part of the master plan that the universe had that, you know, if it, if it had been easy, I would not have to have to discover who I am and what I stand for that that is that's why I said that the 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 product it was a way of for me to rebirth myself in a different way I would say anyone who has who has a dream to create something whatever it is don't let any of the things we said stop you you know go ahead anyway because you don't you don't know what you're going to learn through the journey. The journey is just like, it's never a straight line. It's dots and, and you never know how the dots will eventually connect, but it's like the world wide, wide web. Now, you know, everything connects at one point or another. And <laughs> it's the same with 
It's the that same. That's such good advice, Nadia. I really appreciate that. And you know, the thing is, though, is that there are, um, you know, there are people out there who can who can guide you and can and can move you along and help support you along your path of learning to do this, of getting out there. But as you learned, you've got to start reaching out there and get out of the lab and do that. So get out from behind your product, get out from there and start to explore the bigger world. And you'll start to talk to people and find out, oh, I, have to, I have to have my box checked by a lawyer. I have to have my language checked. I have to have these things. These are, this advice is out there. You just have to start looking for it and, and start listening and not taking it completely to heart because there's also some lot of bad advice out there, right? So, but you've got to, yeah, so you've got to filter it and you've got to really think it through. And that's something that I really appreciate about the way that you work, Nadia, is that you like, you like to sit on something and you like to like let it, let it flow over you. And I'm quick with just like, ooh, I advice and I kind of pepper you and you go, no, I got to sit on this. I got to think about this. And I appreciate that because that shows the sign of like, is this right for my brand? Is this right for me? That takes a lot of power and passion and a lot of concerted effort to be like that and to be very sure in who you are and then who you are going to be moving forward. And that's going to serve you well long-term. Yes. The creating deep roots and understanding where you're understanding what you stand for is really critical because um, so many people earn a lot of money really fast. Take, um, and I know we're going away from the skincare, but take young basketball players who win millions of dollars in their early twenties. And then they finished up at 40 uh, retired from 35 the, <laughs> and they they don't necessarily have the money because they had they always thought the money was always going to be there and they spent it and so my point is that the deep sometimes like you know the 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 bamboo the chinese bamboo tree you know then you know it takes five years and five years to grow but the first five years is the roots. You, do you know that story? Yeah. And then it grows extremely fast and it right. shoots, yes, exactly. Yeah. So the point of that is that having um, something to anchor yourself, uh, anchor what you, and, and because that's what will different, will be your unique selling proposition in the end, you yeah. anch what you anchoring yourself um, with. And as, and sometimes against, I go against fear. I have an issue with people who sell or, or promote fear. Um, and if it, it, it's a, it's, if you've watched, I mean, I have, I stopped watching TV a year and a half ago. Um, just, and my life is much better because I'm not constantly bombarded with all the fear that they shows in the news. So, yeah, but you know, but you're right. And you know, there's this complete fear of, 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 I mean, you know, whether it's the plastic bottle that your stuff is in or the chemicals that you're putting on, or is it, oh my gosh, it's my mammogram is a problem now. You know, it's like, what is the next, right? And so, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, I was just talking to someone last night and they were like, I am having, I have skin reactions to pretty much every sunscreen out there, but I'm afraid to go out in the sun now because I burn. And so that's not me, obviously. I have, I have my, my olive skin and I don't have a problem with that. And I said, but you know what? That's funny because I have sensitivity to sunscreen and I don't like to use it. And luckily I don't have to because I'm, you know, I have the darker skin already. So I'm, I'm farther safer than most people. So, but I always worry about my daughters. Am I slathering them up with sunscreen that has so many chemicals or is the sun going to do that for them? So like, which one's worse? And so we well, ask ourselves these questions as parents, as, as users of things, but is it, is it fear-based that it's coming from, or is it just personal? Like, it just doesn't seem like this is the right thing. Well, it, it, a lot of it is your mindset. So if, if you're afraid of any sunscreen chemical, well, you're going to be afraid of it. And you, you, I mean, there's nothing unless, I mean, you can, I can spend hours teaching you different things. If you set on that mindset, there's nothing I can it's gonna do. Going to happen, right? Exactly. Um, <laughs> and, and that's one thing. Sometimes we don't take the time to 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 uh, ask deeper question. We assume somebody says, um, I, "I came across something. It's very interesting." They, they they're taking propylene glycol and they say you don't want to put antifreeze in your face, and it's two totally related statement, um, and Industrial grade is not cosmetic grade and it's not pharmaceutical grade. However, people take 
things out of proportion. Like if you had a pool load of propylene glycol, and I mean, you don't swim in it, you know, you, <laughs> it's like, sometimes they are, um, what they call MSDS, material safety data sheet, that they are there to help the firefighters. If, if the building that contains these huge quantity, you know, would happen to go on fire, they need to know what to expect. So they're creating those and also the transportation, right? And then there are some bloggers who grab this information and they're taking it out of proportion, making stories out of it. And it's really sad because they're not really sharing the truth. They're just uh, taking a little piece of information and extrapolate on that from ignorance more than knowledge. Um, yeah. my, my point here is not to bash those people. My point is me. Well, I'm going to share with you. If you hear from Nadia, it, Nadia has taken the time to study the material and I'm only sharing what I know that is true from a scientist point of view. Yeah. And see, that's where I think that, you know, this is where if you're not comfortable, if you are in the development of a beauty product and all of those things and you're not comfortable with ingredients and you don't have this knowledge and you do want to do some research on your own, but you also want to get an expert in. Like that, I think, is a, is, the, is a really important thing to have someone who can advise you and say, oh, well, this isn't the same ingredient, so you shouldn't be afraid of it. It's, you know, this is not an industrial grade. This is a different grade, and here's why. You need someone you can, who you can ask these questions for, and, and an expert in that is really critically important. Luckily, you had expertise, at least in the chemical world already, even if it wasn't in every single one of these ingredients, so you already knew what questions to ask, and you know what to look for. That, I think, set you a, a lot farther along the path than many of the people that I've talked to all the time. So, you know, that's really good. But what kind of person, if they want help like that, is there a, like a, a consultant? Is there a kind of person who could advise like that? I mean, you have a textile chemistry background, but is there someone in beauty products specifically that has the right kind of background that they should be looking for? Well, there, there is some, and actually I took them, uh, there are some every once in a while at, in California at UCLA, they have those skincare classes that they actually teaches the, the chemistry behind the skincare. And I, that's where I actually learn. Um, a lot of women who go there tend to be esthetician and they want to understand what they're putting on their client's face. Uh, however, it's really heavy in chemistry and biology because it, What's in the bottle is a chemistry, like it's a mix. And what's on your skin, you're dealing on your skin with bacteria and also with your skin. So there's different layers, different reaction. And I'm going to add something else in the beauty world. On top of mixing the chemical and your, what's on your face, you actually, you actually also have to take into consideration your soul. Because the thoughts you say to yourself matters more than anything else that's what women looks tired when they beat themselves up and they work 60 hours a week and they don't feel beautiful and they don't love themselves i swear this affects a, someone's face way more than anything else and that is just as important to take in consideration okay I'll, I'll did you hear that because this is why you want to buy product from this woman right this is why when you put yourself and your soul out there like Nadia is, this is why we want to buy product from her. So the links to her products will be on our site and I'm going to have her just tell briefly like what they really do because they're, they're pretty fascinating and I, I, I love your products. So tell us a little bit about, about your product. So About my product itself, yeah. the, the Massance Perfection Cream, what it does, it's a, it's a uh, brightening, mattifying primer. And what it does is that it will prevent, especially if you have oily skin, it will, you put that after your moisturizer and it will help your skin, like mattify your skin, but also it protects your pore as you put makeup and later on during the day. So you have a matte finish and it actually protects your skin from pollution as well. And oh, so that sounds I, like much needed right now, especially yes. out here in California. Yes. And, and the idea is that you can take that same product at nighttime and you, you know, after you take your makeup, you can actually, it's, it, it converts into a leave on mask. And that's, um, so that, again, I, I build that for my ease. You know, I needed something quick and easy and I, 
I thought, what if I can ever, I can never make a mask and wait 20 minutes and rinse it. So I, I created this mask. So I just put it on and go to bed. And in the next day, when you wash your face in the shower, you can feel it's all nice and soft. So, um, and, and so the idea, antioxidants, there's, there's five antioxidants in there, all for specific reason, for either for reducing redness or helping hydrate your skin or control the excess sebum over time. It, it has um, many things for different purposes because I was building that with when we have oily skin you'll also have other issues that comes with oily skin like it'll break out and that's what it does it helps with all that wow. and you can use it a little bit like if you just feel like you just need it on your t-zone or you can put it all over your face it's up to you it, it, it's it's it you can just use it as needed or all over and you don't need, need to rinse it so once you apply it then you're good to go you, you put it on and move on I love it. Well, amazing. Well, Nadia, you started a podcast. So yes. if people want to get some more of your, of your heart and soul, how can they find you? Um, they can find me on iTunes or um, the, the, the podcast episode is called Assertive Radiance. And that they can find me every Monday. I'm releasing a new show out there. And I kind of share my journey as I go along and Right now, I'm on that journey of it, sharing how do I get to financial freedom? <laughs> That's where I'm heading. I love it. I love it. Okay. Well, we'll make sure that there's show links to that um, in, in the notes on productlaunchhazards.com on the blog post for this episode. And I am so happy that you came and shared all of this information with us. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you for giving me that opportunity. <laughs> Product launchers, as always, I'll be back next time with another great episode. And don't forget to go to productlaunchhazards.com in the episode and you'll find all kinds of links and information and connections to Nadia.